So I wanted a greenhouse. I was gonna build my own greenhouse. And then they said, well, you gotta find the right plastic. I go online, I go into Amazon for the right plastic for greenhouse. And I find a whole greenhouse for $230 on Amazon, deliberately in two days. Has to be uh, no good, right? Well, uh, I got it. I put it up. I cannot wait to show you inside. But spoiler alert, I guarantee you uh, next week I'm going to buy two more of these so I have them in uh, storage for when everything uh, is unavailable from China. Because this is the best use of $230 I've ever spent. Now, it is cheap. It is junky. It, it is uh, as poorly made and poorly designed as possible. However, with a few modifications, you can make this thing work. And check it out! We started on, uh, I don't know, about April 10th. Uh, this is actually Memorial Day weekend. This is the first frost-free weekend in our growing zone. So this is when I would normally be putting my plants in. Look at my carrots. Look at these beets. And then, and then my, oh, my very favorite. This is the biggest zucchini plant we have ever grown. And look at that zucchini in there zooking away. We got bush beans, we got peas, we got cucumbers. We just ate some string beans. These tomatoes have been in here for only about two or three weeks. I've moved all my starters out here. Now, I did not, this year I, I just went easy on it. I wanted to see what would grow without heating it, without helping it out at all. And uh, I put I put one tomato or two tomato plants in. One did freeze because it was close to a leaky spot. This really worked well for several reasons. One is I had already built these two raised beds, 11 feet apart and 20 feet long. And it turns out this is a 10 and a half by 20 foot uh, greenhouse. It just so happened to be a perfect fit. There's a couple advantages in that because we had this these raised beds. I was able to screw and connect very tightly the edge of this thing. So the wind is never ever going to be able to lift this thing and thrash it away. Also, it elevated the whole unit, that extra foot, which if you think about it, a foot is a lot. This would be, on a flat uh, installation, this would be a little bit cramped. The biggest and dumbest design flaw, and probably the reason this thing is available for $220, is they never put a ridge beam. They put these two purlins on this side and this side, and they allowed for this belly. And I looked, I think this thing, when I looked at it, it had like three and a half stars. Some people were like, I put this up and the next day it rained and it collapsed in a big pile of twisted metal. And it definitely could do that. If you put this thing up the way that, that you get it out of the box, it probably would. There's no reason it wouldn't belly. But in this video, you'll see, we went through the whole, as quickly as we could, we went through the installation of all the parts and how we did this reinforcement thing. Please check it out. Watch the rest of this video here. We'll show you how we set it up. And uh, there's a link to this and a couple other similar cheap Amazon style greenhouses and the results. Check it out. Hey guys, we got the Amazon 130, $230, 26 foot by 10 foot greenhouse tunnel tent thing. So we're gonna assemble this thing over these double raised beds uh, with hopes here in the Northern Adirondacks that we can extend our season. Now we know full well that this thing is cheap, but it looks like if we can modify it, strengthen it up, we can make this thing work. And uh, I'll show you the process. Mumser. Okay. Nice. So we got a nut driver for this, which is definitely speeding it along. But by Jiminy, we're getting a hoop house thing going here. Uh, it's cheap for sure. Like some of the screw holes don't line up, so you got to wiggle waggle it, but. You know, the Amazon uh, thing I read said 
you know, realize what you're getting and you won't be unhappy. And so far, so good. Okay, so far so good. We've got the whole unit set up roughly the way we want it. Uh, so we were impressed. They actually gave us uh, nuts. What are they, Russell? The nylon lock, nuts. nylon lock nuts, which was kind of helpful because those are better quality and they don't back off. Uh, the first, the two ends are very complicated. Like, look how many connections are going on here. Don't just nut the thing together and think you're done. You got to put all the items on. Middle went pretty quick. Then the other end uh, slowed down a little bit. But I think all together, we barely had an hour in putting this up. Uh, this definitely helped, but it wouldn't be a necessity. You definitely want a decent, uh, uh, a decent Allen wrench. Twist everything together. That got us to here. Now we're going to put the green unit up. Then we're gonna go through our modifications because we can already easily see that water is gonna to wanna to puddle at the ridge. So we're gonna check out the plastic. Hot in here. It's great. So it just happened that our uh, raised bed was exactly the dimensions of this thing, which was a huge win. But the big, the big loss, and the thing we got to work on quite a bit now, is there's no reason water wouldn't just belly right here. So that's going to be our next project there. But so far, that thing fit. Uh, it's looking good. All right. So we came up with this two by four, two 16 foot two by fours sistered together and screwed together to be the main ridge beam. In order to retain the door, it really worked out great having these boxes here. We're able to screw right into the door to the boxes for our door opening, or one of our door openings. We want to have cross ventilation. So we're actually going to build another door opening in the other end. Uh, put the header on there. Then we've got these guys here uh, kind of set up and I'm using duct tape. Why? Because duct tape and do anything. Uh, after we set this guy in, dug it in, I chainsawed those things off. And now we're going to duct tape it all together for this stage. Do one more of them and then another header at the other end. So the ridge is definitely going to help, but it's still an awful flat spot here. And I watched online, some people were taking uh, cordage and going up and around and going back and forth. But I was thinking, here's a piece of water pipe. I'm going to duct tape that water pipe down and that's going to reduce that sag. An alternative, if you had like a three quarter inch PEX tubing, that kind of thing would work up there. If you're in an area with flexible smooth stick, you could do that. Or this is a conduit or three quarter inch uh, uh, white pipe, any one of those things connected from there to there is going to make it so water is going to rip off of there. And I think that was the weakest point of this thing was uh, that ridge issue and then a little extra rafter action here. Once you get down here where it's ripping downhill, no worries. But up here, and I'm using duct tape, I know it looks cheap, but the nice thing about the duct tape too is you can kind of smooth out any of the places where over time it would just uh, rub through uh, with the wind and everything and get some more leaks. Although I guess a leaky greenhouse isn't the end of the world. My guess is that they design they didn't really design these things. They made truckloads of them, shipped them over in big containers. We're getting a bunch of bad reviews and just reduced the price like crazy because really it's not that bad. It just uh, had some design issues. And they also sent it with four little wire stakes, which there's no no chance that any wind at all would uh, be held by four little wire stakes. In this situation, boy, if you've got a raised bed thing like this, where you can wrap it down and screw it in, it, it just can't it can't get away. I don't think. We'll find out. We'll have plants in here shortly. So there it is. Doing this, like tying this down, and then. Uh, 
strapping it like that, boy, that makes this thing, well, that spot there is a little wonky, but everything else, pretty tight. And now that we've got those extra braces in there, these things here, that just seals the deal. There is no way that water is gonna puddle up here. And now she's, I mean, even if there was a puddle, it's got some structural rigidity to hold it. And look at this space. I mean, it's April 2nd in Northern Adirondacks and it's hot in here. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're doing all sorts of stuff and trying to fix projects any way we can. And, uh, and check out, I have the Amazon link for this contraption right here. Really, it was about one hour to assemble it and about three hours to assemble it more better so it would actually stay together. But I'm pretty darn happy with my $230 greenhouse. Thanks for watching.